Hello, my name is Lewis Talley with InSource Solutions, and today I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about an introduction of virtualization. Here you see a fairly typical Wonderware architecture comprising of visualization nodes, engineering stations or configuration nodes, some runtime nodes, some configuration repository nodes, as well as some other ancillary nodes. So you may have an architecture similar to this uh, or an architecture that looks nothing like this. Uh, both of those architectures can benefit from virtualization. So let's take a look at what that means. In virtualization, the idea behind it is to take what would normally run on a physical piece of hardware. Uh, there's a one-to-one -one relationship in a physical piece of hardware between an operating system and an operating system runs many applications. In a virtual architecture, you have something called a hypervisor, which manages the resources of the physical host and allocates them as necessary to many isolated execution environments. So in the picture on the right, you see one physical host that can represent many operating systems, and each one of those operating systems can have programs that run independently. So they're separate environments. And we can do this because modern hardware is much more powerful than what the minimum software requirements for running applications on single operating systems in a traditional arch architecture would require. So let's look at what that means to the previous slide. So if we took all of what we saw in the first slide, we could very easily virtualize that on a single physical host. And the hypervisor does a very good job of managing the resources between the guests as necessary. So let's cover the different types of hypervisors. Hypervisors are referred to as either type one or type two. A type one hypervisor also known as a bare metal hypervisor, is something that does not share resources with host operating systems. So it, it, think of it as an operating system that runs and installs on bare metal. So some products that do that are VMware's ESXi, which is what I'm going to focus on. Uh, Microsoft has one called Hyper-V and Citrix has one called their Zen server. Now it should be noted that the type one hypervisors are the only hypervisors that are fully supported by Wonderware tech support. So that means that they go through the formal QA process and if you have problems and need to call into tech support, they would be able to help you and support whatever your issue is. A type two hypervisor on the other hand is something that would share the resources with a host OS. So things like Workstation or Player, which would be VMware solutions or VirtualBox, there's others out there, so we're going to focus just on the VMware solutions today. It should be noted also that Type 2 hypervisors are not supported in production environments. They're fantastic for testing purposes, and they'll work in production environments, but they're not supported, so you should not install them and use them in production environments. So a common misconception that people have is what a Type 1 hypervisor actually looks like. So if you were to actually install a Type 1 hypervisor, such as ESXi, which is what you see here, and you were to hook a monitor up to the physical host, this is what you would see. So it doesn't boot up into a traditional operating system that you might expect. So you're not going to see a Windows interface. You can do management things from here. So if you'll notice, there's a IP address because this is on a network. and the idea behind how you would configure a type 1 hypervisor is that you're going to connect to it over the network and you're going to manage and configure it that way. So this is a brief look at what that might look like. So you can see in my web browser on the left that I've navigated to the IP address of my hypervisor and I can actually download the client tools. Now this redirects you to uh, the World Wide Web where you actually download the client tools to configure it. But over on the right, once, once you do that and install those client tools, you would literally type in the address of what the hypervisor was and you would be presented with a more graphical interface such as what you see on the right. So we'll spend some more time in other video series talking about what the, this is called the vSphere client, what the vSphere client can do. But for the purposes of introduction, let's just see how we would create a virtual machine. So it's as simple as once you connect the host 
uh, once you connect to the host, you would simply right click on the host and select new machine. So we'll cover specifics later of that, but that's basically what that looks like. So if you contrast that to a type two hypervisor, a type two hypervisor would be something that runs and shares the resources with the host operating system. So in this case, I have running on my laptop VMware Workstation as well as the, the player solution. So I would go to the start menu, click the start button, all programs, find VMware, and then select Workstation. Over on the right, I'm presented with a program, VMware Workstation, that allows me to do the same things. Now the key differences between the two are remember that a, a type one hypervisor, bare metal, is you're not sharing the resources with the operating system. So in this case, the type two hypervisor, if I were to start a guest operating system, this slide is just showing you that What's running here on the right is sharing its resources with, in this case, Solitaire on the left, but any program that runs on the host operating system. So that could be Solitaire, it could be Word, it could be Excel, it could be Wonderware applications. So you're sharing the host. So the host resources that would otherwise be dedicated to running guests are now shared with the operating system. So we talked about a brief introduction to the hypervisor. How can InSource help you? We can provide you with documentation and best practices for implementing in virtual environments. So there's a wealth of information out there, including things like the video you're watching that are in our Knowledge Center and are also available on Wonderware's developer network. We can work with you to make recommendations on sizing and architecture. So what type of hardware might I need to run what I just saw in this video on a single host? What type of disk requirements would I have, what type of RAM requirements and processing requirements and other requirements. We can also provide you with pre-configured hardware with this on there or implementation and migration services to do so. We also perform services around health checks and can troubleshoot and fix any problems that, that may arise. Thank you for your time. If you'd like to find out more information about how InSource can help you, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you.